Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the 35th anniversary of Zelda and a potential rumor slash speculation that, you know what, we might not have to wait until E3 for Nintendo to blow it out. Now, personally, I am subscribing to, hey look, uh, we know they're at E3, we know they plan to do the 35th anniversary of Mario at E3 last year, why wouldn't they just do the Zelda stuff then? Well, it could be just because Nintendo has so many other games to talk about that aren't just Zelda, that they're not repeating 2020 where they were going to heavily lean on the 35th anniversary. Basically, Nintendo doesn't need the 35th anniversary of Zelda, uh, you know, to move Switch units. I think it's possible to at least contemplate that, you know what, they might actually do a blowout for that this rather soon. In fact, a certain someone that I am, uh, I've had on our podcast seems to potentially be hinting at it being unveiled this month of all things. So before I get into that, hey, we are get, do have a giveaway going on right now. Head down to the pinned comment or the description to enter. I wish all of you guys luck. Also, you know what, why don't you guys hit that subscribe button because, uh, yeah, we got this cool animation, so why not? <laughs> all right, let's get into oh, what's going on. So my good friend Game Over Jesse uh, put up a tweet yesterday where he said, Hey guys, I'm still hearing April, for those in the know. Uh, and I, you know, based on what he's covered in the past and the, and the people he's interviewed and the rumors that he's talked about in particular with Breath of the Wild 2 or with the Zelda 35th anniversary, that he's probably referencing, hey, look, we're going to hear about the Zelda 35th anniversary this month. And you know what? It's not entirely out of bounds for that to happen. It's not as if Nintendo has a consistent pattern with how they announce anniversary-like items, whether it's Mario's 35th uh, or 25th for Zelda, 25th for Mario, 20th, 10th anniversaries. They don't really have a consistent pattern for how they talk about this stuff and how they unveil things. So it's entirely possible, of course, that... Uh, he could, uh, you know, or Nintendo could be talking about it this month. In particular, at this point, we're talking middle to late April. Uh, and one reason to potentially get the 35th anniversary announcements out of the way now would be to clear the way for E3. So, sure, maybe at E3, that's when we finally see Breath of the Wild 2 again. Maybe at E3... Uh, we're going to see some Zelda stuff, but what if they don't want to dominate E3 with a bunch of Zelda ports, you know, the Twilight Princess, the Wind Waker, or potential remakes from Grezzo, uh, and obviously Breath of the Wild 2. What if they have more to talk about? From Mario Kart 9 to a, a new Mario Odyssey game, maybe a new Kid Icarus, F-Zero. I know f Zero's really hoping there. Star Fox, Pikmin, whatever the case might be. Nintendo might have so many games ready to be talked about in some form that to bog down half the presentation with Zelda ports and remasters uh, and, and merchandise and all that might just seem a little off-putting. Uh, now, personally, I'll be all the hyped, but... It is possible that Nintendo could present all that stuff ahead of time. It's also Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary. It's also Metroid's 35th anniversary. So maybe at an event like E3, they don't want to put too much emphasis on one IP. And they can be like, hey, we got Donkey Kong 40 coming. We got Metroid Prime Trilogy HD coming. Here's a trailer for Breath of the Wild 2. Here's this. Here's that. And they can just kind of give an equal treatment at a big event like that, uh, showing the wide variety and breadth of content Nintendo has in the works or from Nintendo's history, rather than focusing so much on Zelda. Now, Zelda focus has worked in the past. E3 2016 was literally nothing but Breath of the Wild. So it's not as if there's, there's not a point to focus on a single game or a single franchise I, I just think that nintendo clearly has a massive switch audience they're trying to appeal to and not all of them believe it or not are interested in zelda even if you could argue you know uh, one fourth one fifth of the audience maybe is so it is something to consider that you know what maybe nintendo wants to clear that slate now when we look at potential announcements we've talked about this in the past or you know we already have skyward sword hd and the Skyward Sword Joy-Con. We also have all the rumors and reports out there that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be a Switch Pro launch game, and then Bloomberg basically saying and planting their flag that, hey, Switch Pro 
Switch, new Switch, whatever it's called, is coming out this holiday. So ergo, if it's coming out this holiday, Breath of the Wild 2 is also coming out this holiday. Uh, that seems to be uh, what uh, what the rumor mill is leaning towards. There's obviously what else could be done. We've talked about this already, but we'll just kind of recap some of the more popular uh, rumors out there. Things like a custom Switch console, or in this case, a Switch Pro console. Um, you know, more custom Joy-Con. Maybe we were getting more than one set. We had one set of Mario Red Joy. Joy-Con, so we have the Skyward Sword Joy-Cons, and people might be like, oh, we're not going to get any more. Who's to say we're not? Who's to say we're not going to get a custom Pro Controller? Uh, who's to say that, uh, you know, we did, we did get a custom Mario Switch, so, so getting a, a Zelda one wouldn't be too surprising. Uh, but who's to say what games we're going to end up getting? What merchandise? Who's to say we're not going to get a Zelda Lego set? We have Mario Lego sets, so why not Zelda? I realized they did something unique with Mario, but... For most people that bought the Mario set, maybe you did the unique level thing for a little bit, but then just, hey, look, this is kind of a cool display piece, like most of the Lego sets out there. It's really cool to have them as a display piece after you do that initial play session. So uh, it, that's always possible as well. Um, I, I think that we're at a point now where there seems to be a lot of unknowns for almost all three major console manufacturers. If you think about it, we presume there's a ton of games ready for microsoft and game pass to show off but we haven't seen them we presume sony has a bunch of games on slate we know about like the new horizon zero dawn game uh you know forsaken or whatever it's being called and and, and I, i'm probably wrong on that name i'm trying to pull it off the top of my head uh and we know about some other stuff but honestly we don't know when a lot of the stuff is coming we don't know you know after ratchet and clank what's next uh, we had the medium come out, you know, for Xbox. What's next? Is it Halo Infinite? Because that feels like kind of a long wait. And for Nintendo, like, hey, we know about new Pokemon Snap. We know about some Pokemon stuff in general. But besides, like, Mario Golf, where's the new games coming? I know people are going to point out Miitopia. Miitopia is not new. It's a port. So new games. Uh, so it feels like Nintendo should have a lot of games to potentially talk about. Splatoon 3, whoo, 2022, but like that's not the only game they have that matters. So I'm really, really hoping to see a lot from Nintendo. And when you think about wanting a lot of variety at E3, that lends credence to, hey, you know what? Maybe they blow out the Zelda 35th. Now, now you might go, well, what if they just don't do a Zelda 35th anniversary celebration? Nintendo never said they were going to do one. So why do we presume there will be one? Well, because Nintendo did one for the 20th, the 25th, and the 30th. Nintendo celebrates it every time. So um, it'd be weird for them not to when Zelda's more popular than it's ever been. You know, that's kind of the caveat. They've done it in the past, and now Zelda's more popular than it's ever been, and they just apparently thought 35th anniversary was big enough to do something for mario so why not for zelda i think that's that, that that's more so the thought process is you know what why not so we'll see what happens uh, i want to know do you guys want to see them blow it out this month and, and clear the slate for e3 do you think nintendo has the capability to blow it out this month and, and clear the slate to e3 do you think nintendo's trying to wait uh there's been some thought processes that you know what they they, they announced the 35th anniversary of mario after Paper Mario came out, you think they're going to wait with Zelda 35th anniversary and push it to after July, you know, after we get Skyward Sword HD, so then it's not impacted by sales? Do you think that's not going to matter? Do you think things are just going to sell well anyways? Do you think Skyward Sword HD is going to sell well, even if we know Breath of the Wild 2 is coming this holiday or something like that? Um, let me know down in the comments below because I'm very uh, curious. This is one of my... Uh, this is not one of my... This is my favorite franchise of all time. So anything happening around it always excites me and, and tickles my fancy. It makes me want to know, you know, what the hell Nintendo is doing. So, hey, whether Game Over Jesse or others are correct... Um, again, he didn't specifically say 35th anniversary. I'm kind of presuming that's what he meant. Um, I guess we'll find out soon. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robochance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, guys, anytime there's even the tiniest morsel of Zelda, you know we're going to talk about it here because Zelda is near and dear to my heart, and I think it's near and dear to yours as well. All right, folks, I am Nathaniel Robochance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.